Hello again gamers and welcome back to The Rules Are Fun. It is me, the Madcap Gamer, and today we are looking at King of Tokyo. King of Tokyo, for the few of you out there that still don't know what this game is, is a 2-6 to six player arcade style beat-em-up game. It can take up to half an hour if you've got all six players going and it's for ages eight and up. The objective of the game is to pit yourself against all other monsters on the field to become the King of Tokyo. Now there are two ways to best your opponents and become the ultimate King of Tokyo in this game. One is to become the first monster to reach 20 victory points before anyone else does. And the other way is to simply destroy all of the other monsters in the game by reducing them to zero health. How does this happen? Well, let's get into King of Tokyo. The setup of the game is about as simple as the game itself is to play. You will need the King of Tokyo Tokyo board in the center of the field. As you can see, Tokyo City is clearly marked for somewhere to put your token when you are in Tokyo City. Tokyo Bay is only used if there are five to six players at the table. Otherwise, players are given their monster sheets as well as their monster token, all of which start the game outside of Tokyo itself. The next thing you will need are these upgrade cards, which you will shuffle the deck and deal out the top three for the players that can, as they gain power throughout the game, spend that power on upgrading their monsters. These green cubes are the power cubes, which you will use as a kind of currency to buy these cards. There are a couple of bonus dice, which we might be able to use depending on the upgrades that you give your beast. And the same with these tokens. They are dependent on the upgrade cards. These six black and green dice are your main King of Tokyo dice that you'll be using every turn, and we are ready to play the game. Each time the player takes a turn, they'll get an opportunity to roll the six King of Tokyo dice up to three times, a little bit like Yahtzee. Roll the dice, pick the dice that you want to keep, roll the others up to three times until you've got a hand that you are happy with. Then you get to play out the dice spending their effects. The effects run like follows. A claw means an attack against any opponent who is not currently in your zone. There are only two main zones outside of Tokyo and inside Tokyo City. Unless five or six players, Tokyo Bay is in play as well. Lightning Bolts are power tokens and will be exchanged at the end of the player's turn for the power cubes, which they will rack up and use as currency to buy their upgrade cards. Hearts are healing dice and will be used to heal your monster should they have suffered damage before, up to a maximum of their original 10. The numbered dice are used to score victory points. Every time you roll three of a kind of the numbered dice, you may collect three victory points, one for each dice that you have rolled your three of a kind. Now, single dice and pairs do not count. You must have a minimum of three of a kind. However, once you reach that three of a kind, you can add extra dice of the same number to get an extra victory point. For instance, if I rolled four threes, I would get three victory points because I got three of a kind, and I would get a bonus one because there's another of the same number. If I rolled three of a kind and then a one, this one doesn't do anything for me. Likewise, if I rolled two ones and two threes, well, pairs don't count, so tough luck. There are two main zones to keep in mind as the play progresses, outside of Tokyo and inside of Tokyo. The player who is inside of Tokyo, when they roll an attack, attacks every monster outside of Tokyo. So if this player rolls one claw, for instance, every player that is currently not in Tokyo would lose one damage. Likewise, every player whose turn it is that is outside Tokyo, they can only attack the person who is inside. So each time a player outside Tokyo rolls a claw, that damage is directed towards the one monster that is inside Tokyo. Special point to keep in mind is that the creature that is inside Tokyo cannot use hearts to heal themselves. Basically, they're inside Tokyo suffering all the damage and desperately trying to keep the city for themselves. The only way that they can heal is if they are outside Tokyo. So let's have a look at how this happens. In the first turn of the game, all players will roll these six dice and the player with the most claws gets the first turn. They roll their dice and then do all the things that they would like to do in their turn, such as collecting victory points, collecting power cubes, healing a heart, which they can't use because they're on their full 10 at the start of the game, and doing damage, which again, they can't do because everyone is outside Tokyo and you can only damage the people that aren't in your zone. At the end of your turn, if nobody is inside Tokyo, you must enter Tokyo itself. So the player who goes first 
will end up inside of Tokyo. At the end of their turn, they can look at the upgrade cards that are available and see if they have any cubes that they would like to exchange for them. Play then passes to the next player along. That player rolls their dice, gets a similar result, taking some victory points, which they can keep track of on their dial, taking the power cube, healing, which they didn't have any damage to heal anyway, and doing a damage to the player who is inside Tokyo. Now the player inside Tokyo starts taking damage, goes down to 9. At the end of any player's turn in which the monster inside Tokyo has suffered damage, that monster can elect to leave Tokyo. They have suffered enough injuries and have decided to retreat and lick their wounds. In that case, it is the end of the other player's turn and Tokyo is vacant. Therefore, they must be the king of Tokyo. The player will go around the table with the monsters racking up victory points, damage to other players, and trying to keep their own monster alive. As play continues, monsters will be eliminated and destroyed, either leaving one monster alive to be king of Tokyo, or a particularly sneaky player may get enough victory points to snatch victory without having killed off all of their opponents. In either case, they are the king of Tokyo and get all of the bragging rights, and usually plenty of time left over to re-rack and play a second round. The last thing I'll go through with you for today is the upgrade cards. Now, as said, at the end of a player's turn, once they have spent up all of the damage or health or victory points that their dice have given them, they can now spend these power cubes in order to buy upgrade cards for their monster. Now the cards are split up into two kinds. They are either keep cards, and they will have a keep written at the bottom of them, in which case when you buy them, you keep them with your monster and the effects are ongoing. Or they could be discard cards, in which case you buy them and spend them immediately to get whatever the effect they may have is. Now, two of the cards in front of us have an effect that is ongoing and involves the tokens and extra dice as mentioned earlier. So, if we buy the giant brain, you can have one extra die roll each turn. This is where the light green on black cards come into play. Every time this player takes a turn for the rest of the game, they will roll a seventh dice. If they happen to get another of these cards, then they might even get to eight dice if someone else doesn't buy that card before them. The next one over is the Shrink Ray. Once a player has a Shrink Ray, they can deal out a Shrink Ray token. It has the same image on it as the card to every monster that they wound. This monster has to roll one less dice for each Shrink Ray token that they have. So, as this player goes around wounding more and more monsters, they will actually get shrunk smaller and smaller and get less and less dice to roll as the game goes on. And there you have it, you are armed and ready to battle it out to become the next King of Tokyo. But before we go, why should we play this game? King of Tokyo is a very quick, very fast, very easy to understand and set up arcade style game. It is one of those no fuss, no must games that you can crack out on any sort of board game night and up to six people can get involved rather quickly and they do not have to commit to a game that's going to take hours, a game that's going to take a lot of rules and understanding and a game that's going to take a particular amount of skill. This one is very much luck of the dice but with enough strategy so that people that have played King of Tokyo before or similar games will have an edge on their opponents and two players that are both fairly expert at the game will see challenge enough taking each other on. The artwork is great and it's completely cartoonish and unintimidating for all those new players as well. The cards are easy to understand, the upgrades are easy to understand and they're the most complicated part of the game and all players get to keep easy track of the wounds they have and the victory points they have without any sort of complicated pads and pens and things like that. The thing I love about King of Tokyo is it's one of those games that really does downsize well to a two-player game. We've all got those board games that have been sitting in our closet for months or years because we just didn't have the six players required for the game or the four players required on a night. And we've probably also played a couple of those games that say that it can go down to two players or up to six players, but when you do just play it with two people, it loses a little bit of its magic. King of Tokyo doesn't seem to do that, and although you can tell the difference between staying in Tokyo and leaving Tokyo when you might have one opponent on the outside attacking you versus five opponents on the outside attacking you, it also doesn't change the game so much that it cannot be enjoyed. In fact, it's so quick, so easy, and does work so well with two players that this particular game is actually going to be our first 
playthrough. Yes, we are finally, finally expanding into our playthroughs of board games, which we like to call Just Play It, which is exactly what we are going to do. And our debut episode is going to be this very game, two players, so you can see just how quick just how easy it is and how much fun it can still be with only two players. Having seen all of that, I hope you have been inspired to pick up your copy of King of Tokyo. I have played it many times over the years, but a copy of the game has never taken up residence inside my games cupboard until now, and I cannot wait to bust it out at more Games Nights in the future. Until then, see you guys at the table.